This training video was developed at the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading. It's part of a set of resources aimed primarily at researchers. In this demonstration, we will show how to program skips and checks into the data entry system. We will use skips to automatically skip over the not applicable income items, and we will add a check to make sure the number of economically active people in the household does not exceed the household size. The CS Pro language is called Logic and we'll start by showing a logic procedure to check household size against economically active individuals. We select the item for economically active people and either click the logic icon or choose view logic. The item is called econ act and this will start a procedure called proc econ act which will run after a value has been entered into this item. We will use an if statement to check whether econ act is greater than HH size. The basic syntax of the if statement is if condition is true, then action, end if. Here the condition is econ act greater than HH size. Is there more economically active people than there are in the household? The action is to run the error message function to display a custom error message and to force re-entry of the value. The percent %d in the message will be replaced with the value from hh size. The end if indicates the end of the if statement. Let's save this check and test it by entering some data. We choose Run. We select and open the data file and give the operator ID. We then click the icon to add new cases. Notice there was already a case in this data file. We don't automatically go into Add mode. We'll click in Household Size and enter 3. Then we'll enter 5 as the number of economically active people. Straight away, the error message generated by our procedure appears. We press F8 to clear the message and then re-enter the value. We want to skip the not applicable income fields during data entry. Now we need to think carefully about which item to attach the procedure to, bearing in mind that the procedure runs after you enter data into the item. For instance, if sale of crops in 2A is not a source of income, we want to skip the income item for sale of crops in 2B. But we can't program the skip on the sale of crops item as we need to enter the other sources of income first. Therefore, we put the skip on the last of the sources of income items, which is salary from employment. So we select salary from employment and we go into logic. The code we use is again based on an if statement. We say if crops equals zero, i.e. sale of crops is not a source of income, then we skip to the income item for sale of livestock. Let's test this automatic skip. We go into the data entry system and move to page 2. We'll set pension as the only source of income. Notice that when we move out of the salary for employment item, we move directly to the income from sale of livestock item. The system tested the value from the sale of crops item, and as this was zero, it skipped to the sale of livestock 
income item. Now, ideally, we would want to skip this item as well because the sale of livestock is not a source of income. And for this, we would need to change our code. What we need to do is use nested if statements to look for a source of income. The procedure will now skip to the income item corresponding to the first selected income source. These nested if statements may look complicated, but if you work through them step by step, you should be able to follow them. Indenting as shown, so the if lines up with the corresponding else and end if, helps to ensure the statements all match correctly. Otherwise, otherwise it's very easy to miss out an end if. Let's walk through this syntax. First, we check if crops equals zero, i.e. not a source of income. If this is true, we go on to check sale of livestock. If crops is an income source, we follow the else clause and skip to in crops. Strictly speaking, this else clause is not needed as we would go to in crops anyway, but we've included it here to make, make it more consistent and easier to follow. Now, if sale of livestock is not an income source, we then check for pension. Otherwise, we move to the sale of livestock income item and so on, gradually going deeper into the nesting. If it turns out that there are no income sources, then we skip to type of wall. Let's test this syntax. We can experiment with different income sources and see where the, where the cursor moves to. If we select sale of crops, we jump to income for sale of crops. If we select pension, we jump to the income for pension. To make this work properly though, we need to add further procedures. For example, if pension is the only source of income, we successfully jump to the income from pension item, but from here, we move into the income from salary, which is not applicable. We would need to add procedures to the first three of the income items to check whether the next item is applicable. So for the income from sale of crops item, we run a test to see which of the other three options are sources of income and skip to the appropriate item. For the income from sale of livestock item, there are just two income sources to check. And once we have entered the income from pension, we only need to check whether salary is an income source. So here we have just a single if statement. Let's see if this works. We'll set sale of crops and pension as the only income sources. We fill in a value for the crop sales and skip from there to pension. We enter a value for the pension and after entering that value, we skip to type of wall. So our syntax is working fine. In this demonstration, we have just used a few simple statements from the CS Pro logic language, but can see how even these simple statements can help with data entry and checking. Whenever you create a logic procedure, it is important to check it in the data entry system. For more details about the logic language, see the CS Pro Help and user manuals.